Hi folks, this is a real practice tutorial showing how to produce controlled facial animation combining a lip sync track with iClone 7's new face puppet and face key tool sets. This builds on my previous tutorials which covered how to use face puppet and face key as individual systems. In this video, we'll mix the two approaches in order to choreograph a detailed facial animation relative to a pre-prepared lip sync speech. Now, the approaches which follow are in no way cast in stone. You can work in any order at whatever level of detail using whichever mix of systems you want at any time in order to create the results you're looking for in your own animations. There's quite a lot to do so let's get started. Here we have the new Zane character currently with no animation at all. First, I load a lip sync track as an iTalk file which I prepared earlier. This includes an original audio file as well as Vizine keys which were auto-generated using the Create Script from Audio File function on the Animation menu. The lip sync here has also been manually polished to be as accurate as possible. I've opened up the Vizine timeline so you can see the lip sync and I'll keep the audio waveform visible for reference throughout the animation creation process. You'll also notice that when loading an iTalk file, an expression track is also loaded, but since this one as yet has no facial animation, I'll delete it. Now, the lip sync track here is 58 seconds, almost a minute long. And whilst there are many ways we could start animating, for example by doing continuous linear face puppet takes across the whole track, or by placing expression keys at all the places we want them over the timeline, it's much more straightforward and controllable to work in sections. So we'll go sentence by sentence, adjusting the playback marker time so we can work in bite-sized chunks and then zooming into the selected area by using the ALT key along with the mouse scroll bar. I'm also going to delay the lip sync track a little by moving it along the timeline. This will give a short lead-in time so that the animation can be established a little before the character starts his speech. OK, let's hear what the character is saying in this first section. Aw oh, shucks officer, I just need your help here and you're accusing me of wasting police time. Now. I could make the character smile and look happy throughout, but given what he's saying and how he's saying it, it makes much more sense to make him seem unhappy and frustrated at the start, then more pleading and concerned towards the end. And this is a fundamental point. Good facial animation, just like good acting, is about expressing emotion in context with what's being communicated. So here, I'm starting by blocking in two full face profile face puppet clips for sad, then surprised and then editing them to where I generally want them. Now I'll use a pass of combined solo feature face puppetry just to create a little asymmetry and tension. But generally speaking, I'm using face puppet here as a broad brush before moving in further with some face key editing. Aw oh, shucks officer, I just need your help here and you're accusing me of wasting police time. It's important to preview often to see what's working and what isn't. And if you don't like a particular section, don't be afraid to delete either the whole clip or part of a clip. OK, so we've done a couple of face puppet passes and some clip editing. Now let's start refining the animation a bit further using face key. I'm simply using the muscle panel to adjust some of the expressions I created through face puppet and to start the animation with the character's eyes closed, opening just before he speaks. Now I have the expressions pretty much as I want them, I'm doing some more face puppet passes to create a little eye motion and blinking, and then head motion which will serve to emphasize the speech. And I'll return to face key again and use some head keyframes to clarify the head motion I created in the last face puppet pass, making the character more clearly turn in towards the camera, and adding some more emphatic tilt to go along with what he's saying. Let's play that back. Aw oh, shucks officer. I just need your help here, and you're accusing me of wasting police time. I'm reasonably happy with that for the first section, so now I'll zoom out a little and move on to the next sentence, readjusting the playback time markers. But notice I'm keeping part of the first clip included in the next work area. This is so that I can keep the animation in context as it moves forward. And now let's see what the character is saying in the next sentence. 
wasting police time. How many times do I have to tell you it was a banana? So here, he's completely exasperated, almost giving up at the start until his outburst at the end of the sentence. For this section, I'm going to do some initial blocking with face keys rather than puppet clips, being careful to use closed mouth expressions in order to leave the lip sync intact. But I want to make an important point about what happens when you extend an existing puppet clip by adding face keys. Here, I've added a fear expression which has extended the clip, but as I drag along the earlier timeline, you can see that this keyframe is affecting the puppet clip which I recorded previously. This is because there are currently no muscle keys in the clip prior to the new keyframe. And I don't want that. I want my existing clip as before, simply moving on to the new expression. Now I can handle this in one of three ways. I'll show them to you. The first method is to create a default key from the muscle panel. And if, as here, this causes the head and eyes to revert to default because there are currently no visible or flattened keys between my original clip and the new expression key which extends it, I can simply delete the new default eye and head keys in order to blend properly into the new expression. The second method is to create what I call a zero key by left clicking in the timeline before the end of the clip, then applying your expression to extend as before. The zero key solves the issue by establishing the current state before transition into the new expression keyframe. And I'll be discussing this approach to creating keys a little more when covering problem solving later. Third, you can use a null or empty puppet track. Here, I simply record a face puppet clip without any mouse movement, which gives me an empty clip, and then apply the expression keyframe I want without needing to use zero or default keys and additional edits to blend in new expressions following a clip. I find zero keys and null clips to be the simplest approaches, but it's worth knowing all methods so that you know what's happening, particularly when applying expression keys between existing clips. Now of course, at the start I could have recorded a null puppet track for the whole animation, or even keep the empty expression clip from the original iTalk file I started with, and then build up all sections of animation on top of that. But since I'm working in sections, and combining clip editing with face keys and face puppet, I find it much clearer and easier to build clips into an empty timeline as I move forward. So here I'm continuing with face key, I've added a couple more expressions, and now I'm using the muscle panel as well as moving keys on the timeline to get the effects I want. Next, I'm using face puppet passes to block in head and then eye rotations as well as solo feature cheek and lower eyelid puppetry to add a little more tension to the character's face as his speech progresses. But again, I like to consider face puppet as a broad brush to get general animation going quickly, and for more precise timing, as well as fine-tuning facial expressions and eye and head animation, I go into more detail using face key as well as timeline clip editing where needed. So now we're coming up to a section where I want to make the character snarl for the end of the word banana. And here, whilst I could use zero keys simply by clicking on the muscle key timeline, I'm using default keys before and after adding the lip adjustment, so he'll snarl on cue, but that expression won't interfere with the previous or subsequent animation. And whilst this particular instance amounts to a lip sync adjustment, bracketing adjustment keys with default or zero keyframes is a vital technique which can be applied to fine tuning and control of any facial expression on the timeline. Now let's see where we're up to. Wasting police time. How many times do I have to tell you it was a banana? And now adjusting the first timeline marker to preview the whole animation which has been built up so far. Aw oh, shucks officer. I just need your help here and you're accusing me of wasting police time. How many times do I have to tell you it was a banana? Now there's still a lot to be done, even in this first section, but the way I normally work is to first progress through the full sequence, section by section as I've done already. I get each part to a reasonable standard before proceeding with the next, and once I have a full animation which is generally working, then I go back through with further passes of fixing and polishing problem areas. So I'm working on the next section now. This time, I started with a few sequential passes of full face face puppet profiles, then some face keys to enhance the upper eyelids. Next, some face puppet head rotations to match the speech, along with appropriate eye rotations and blinks, and then more face keys to enhance and emphasize the head rotations and eye focus at particular points. Again, 
It's important to stress that you can start with either Face Puppet or Face Keys, and the process of building up facial animation in iClone 7 is quite non-linear. It's really about using the tools in whichever way gives you the results you want, and by experience and observation of the animation you're developing, knowing which approach will work best, and most efficiently to create what you're aiming for. Now let's preview the animation as it is so far. Aw oh, shucks officer. I just need your help here, and you're accusing me of wasting police time. How many times do I have to tell you it was a banana? And I know, I'm a big guy and I can handle myself, but it was the shock. I didn't expect it, so what can I do? Now before we step forward to some later polishing techniques, I want to show you how to fix some potential problem areas, and for this, We'll just work on the animation as it is so far. Here, I see a head rotation which is too jerky as a result of the transition between different clips. To fix, I'll simply extend the transition length to increase the blend with the previous clip. Next, I'm looking at an area of overblinking when the cheeks and lower eyelids are raised. And whilst I could easily delete a few frames here, I like this part of the animation so I want to fix it. Now as you can see, readjusting with muscle key here doesn't help because the blink was created by a face puppet pass and is embedded in the default animation. But I can readjust by using modify slider values. But first, I'm going to use the bracketing technique I mentioned earlier, this time using zero keys to ensure that the adjustment is isolated to where I want it. You can set zero keys any way you want just by left clicking in empty frames within the clip. And now that I've bracketed the area, I'm using a blink modify slider with a negative value to solve the overblinking. And this method of using modify slider values with zero or default key bracketing can be used to fix many subtle animation issues, if you really want to keep all of the frames you have so far. Now it's important to note that left clicking to create zero keys is not quite the same as setting default keys using the default key button. Default keys revert to the animation state embedded in the expression clip itself, whilst zero keys simply establish a key at the current timeline state, including any transitions which are applied. And as a last fix in this part of the tutorial, I want the character to end this clip with his mouth open, extending his word do. So I'll create a zero key as he goes into the vowel, and then simply use the muscle key panel to end with the jaw open. OK, so now that we've covered building up animation in short sections, as well as linking clips and fixing some of the issues which may crop up, I'm moving forward to when I have a whole animation blocked in and I'm applying further passes of the same techniques to fix parts I'm not happy with, as well as to bring the whole piece together. So at this stage I have a single flattened clip and I'm fixing a lips issue where the lips become too tight as a result of some previous morph interactions. I'm using the negative value modify slider on the plosive expression to compensate for this, with a single zero key before it so that the correction remains in place for the rest of the sequence. Next, I'm fixing another jerky head rotation, and since I have no individual keys to fix here, I simply break the clip and delete a few frames, and use the following clip transition to soften the head movement. Now, I want to add a little more mobility to the face, so I'm going to do a complete face puppet pass using the solo feature mouth move profile. As I said earlier, I think of face puppet as a broad brush, whilst face key is more precise and suited for fine tuning. But even at this stage of the process, I can still use a broad brush to make overall enhancements if I wish. And it's important not to feel restricted to working in any particular formal order, since you need to be able to use the available tools creatively to get the results you're aiming for. Finally, I'll show you the animation after a few more passes of face puppet, face key and clip editing. And if you consider where we started, you'll understand that the animation was quite simply and roughly built up to start with, and then refined with further passes using the different tools and techniques shown. This is the way I normally produce animations in iClone, but how you do it really is up to you. I hope you found this tutorial to be of interest, and many thanks for watching. Aw oh, shucks officer, I just need your help here, and you're accusing me of wasting police time. How many times do I have to tell you it was a banana? And I know, I'm a big guy and I can handle myself, but it was the shock. I didn't expect it, so what can I do? Oh, you can laugh all you want. I know. It's funny. Hilarious. You're never going to let me live this down. I wouldn't either. But it was the look in her eyes. 
She was serious. I mean, that kid's a stone cold killer. And when she pointed that banana at me, I didn't think. All I could see was this psycho kid with crazy looking pigtails and I, I, I thought the banana was a gun, all right? You know the rest. She got all my money, my keys, and how am I going to get home? 